While browsing through some new awards collections, I stumbled upon this incredible diagonal carousel. I decided to challenge myself to recreate it using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and GSAP. In today's tutorial, I'll guide you through the steps and the logic behind creating any such clip path slider using basic JavaScript only, and you'll be able to do it in just a few minutes. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. Now let's dive right into the code without any further delay. To kick things off, we'll start with just one slide, which will act as our foundation. We'll create new slides on every click, following the structure we set up initially. Let's begin by constructing our slider. Our initial slide will have a dark theme, so I'll assign it the class name dark. Each slide will be divided into three key sections. The first section is an image container for the initial image. Next, we have the slide content where we'll place our text. Following that, there is another image container. We'll populate both image containers with their respective images and insert an h1 tag within the slide content. And that covers the basic setup. Now let's move on to adding some CSS to style our slides. We'll reset the margin, padding and box sizing for all the elements to ensure a consistent layout across different browsers. For our images, we'll set them to fully cover their containers by setting their width and height to 100% and applying object fit cover. We position the slider container absolutely to fill the entire viewport, setting its width and height to 100 viewport width and 100 viewport height respectively and giving it a natural grey background. Each slide is also absolutely positioned to cover the viewport with a higher Z index to keep it above other content. We have chosen a similar background color here and will set overflow to hidden just to avoid any unnecessary scrolling. For the dark thin slides, we change the background color to black creating a dramatic contrast. The slide content is crucial for positioning our text. It's centrally placed using absolute positioning and transform properties. We'll also center the text alignment. The H1 within the slide content has been styled with a specific font, greatly enlarged size and the light font weight with uppercase transformation for added style. Its color contrasts with the slide's theme, black for light backgrounds and a light gray for dark theme. Lastly, we handle the individual slide images. These are precisely positioned and sized with added filters for the effect. The images in slide image 1 and slide image 2 are slightly rotated to create a diagonal look. And with that, our CSS setup is complete. We'll set up an event listener to wait until the HTML document is fully loaded. We'll declare an array named slider content containing slides titles. We are going to use this array to dynamically populate our slides content. We then use document.querySelector to select our slider container. ActiveSlide is a variable used to track the current slides index. It starts at 0, which refers to the first slide. We listen for click events on the entire document. When a user clicks anywhere, we first find the currently visible slide that isn't marked as exiting. 
This light theme is also determined by whether the index of active light is odd or even, alternating between dark and light theme for varied visual effects. We also increase the active light counter based on the number of slides we have, moving between 1 to 6. If a slide is currently displayed, we use GSAP to animate its image of words. Preparing it to exit the viewport, which is visually appealing and signals a transition. In the next part, we are focusing on how to dynamically generate and configure a new slide in our slider using JavaScript. We begin by creating a new div element, which will serve as our slide container. This is done using document.create element. We then add two classes to this new slide. Slide, which is a general class for all slides, and slide theme, which alternates between dark and light depending on the active slide index. Initially, we want our slide to be invisible and only become visible through animation. To achieve this, we set the clip path style. This CSS property clips the slide in such a way that it starts completely collapsed at the bottom of the screen. Then we prepare the first image container. We create another div for the first image and assign it the classes slide image and slide image 1. Inside this container, we insert an image element. The source of the image is dynamically set to correspond with the current slide, pulling from a directory that matches the active slide number plus 1. We then position the image at top 100%, which means it starts just below the visible area of the slide, ready to be animated upward in the view. The image container is then appended to the main slide container. We next decide the content we want to render on this slide. So next, we create a div for the slide's content and add the class slide content. Inside this container, we dynamically insert an h1 element using inner HTML. The text for the h1 is taken from our slider content array based on the current active slide index and its style with a scale of 1.5 to enhance its visibility and impact. This content container is then also appended to the slide. We also need to prepare the second image container as well. So I'll copy the first block and just update the names to create the second image container. Finally, the entire new slide, now fully configured with two images and content, is appended to the main slider container. This is where our new slide officially becomes part of the DOM and ready for animation. It's time to animate the new slide now. We initiate the GSAP animation on new slide. The clip path is animated which transitions the slide from being completely collapsed at the bottom to fully visible. As soon as the slide begins to animate into view, we also start another animation targeting the images, image 1 and 2. These images move from below and slide to top 100% to their final position at the center, top 50%. Once the slide is fully visible and the animation completes, we call the remove extra slide function, a function designed to keep our DOM clean by removing old slides. Alongside the slide animation, we specifically target the H1 element within slide content using another GSAP2 function. Here we animate its scale from 1.5 to 1 over the same duration and easing as the slide animation. This scaling draws attention to the slide's title. Remove extra slide function is a function that ensures a performance remains optimal by keeping the number of slides elements in check. It checks if the total number of children in the container exceeds 5 and if so, remove the oldest child, the first in the list. This function is crucial for long-running applications where the continuous slide additions could otherwise bloat the dome and degrade performance. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.